Nicole sat in place, feeling paralyzed. It was showtime. Where was everyone? She checked the cameras again, desperate, as one refreshing Instagram just in case a message had come through in the last 90 seconds. No such luck. Where could her co-host be? It was her show, of course. She knew that as well as anyone. And yet, and yet, he brought a certain je ne sais quoi to the whole affair. Loath as she was to admit it, perhaps he did bring a small amount of value to the show. But this was no time for reflection. This was a time for action. She steeled herself, resolving to move forward, and opened her mouth. But alas, in a crucial moment, she was blanking on the name of the show. Panic, she winged it with her best guess and welcomed the audience. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Kelly's Basement of Horrors. Silence. Thundering, heart-rending silence. What now? She smiled broadly, as if this were all intentional. What could even be done? The obvious play would be to skip right to the guest. She checked the cameras again, another metaphorical look at a notification-free screen. She felt like a character in an old Taylor Swift song. Gut punch. She did her best to hide her disappointment, but it showed on her face, like the shame of a dog caught pissing on a priceless ornamental rug. How could the guest have forsaken her after all they'd been through together? And for what reason? Because they had to wash their hair today? It was all so much to process. Why, Lucas, why? The realization that she had been sitting in silence, live on the stream, hit her with such great and terrible force that she yelped audibly. She knew she had to buy time. She knew she had to rope the audience in before they left. She began to hype up the evening's agenda, making ludicrous promises regarding the content that she could never possibly keep. Uh, yeah, so if you guys stay tuned, um, we're actually going to have uh, Oprah on um, any minute now. She's going to come on and she's going to do our giveaway and uh, everyone in the audience gets a gift. Um, it's totally fine. It's, uh, she's definitely not going to support any, uh, problematic characters. It's, it's going to be great. She was exhausting herself. Her bag of tricks was empty. Why had she agreed to host this show? She worked backward through her life choices, regretting each decision in turn that she reckoned had led her to this point. She sank deep in her chair and deep into rumination. Only dimly did she remember that she had airtime to fill and instinctively began the longest um she could just to steal precious seconds. Um. This was it. No co-host, no guest, not even a producer. Her face wrinkled as she wrestled with the horror of the only choice left to her. Interact with the GM. She reached anxiously to turn on his camera with a slowness that only served to drag out her suffering. But at long last, there he was, just sitting there, oblivious to anything going on, grinning like an idiot. She took a deep breath before daring to speak. He seemed to take no notice of her. Finally, backed into a corner. She greeted him with the same strained fake enthusiasm one would deploy when running into one's ex and their hot new partner at the dildo store when one was all alone. Uh, hey, Ian, what is up? Long time to see. <laughs> this, at least, seemed to get his attention. He greeted her back with the same sort of energetic bliss you'd expect from a squirrel at a birthday party. Well, hey there, partner. <laughs> how's, the, how's the chicken? <laughs> and that was it. He stared at her with his beady little eyes, fixated on the camera in front of him like it was going to start talking to him. But it didn't. It just watched. And he watched back. The two of them just sat there a moment, unblinking. But then, all of a sudden, blinking a lot, entirely too much blinking. She scrambled for something to ask him, when suddenly, out of the blue, he broke the silence on his own. Somewhere in that impenetrable meathead skull of his, a switch seemed to flip, 
and he looked dimly aware that he was a part of the show as well. Attempting to make small talk, he blurted out the most awkward question imaginable. Uh, shit much today? <laughs> make any big poops? <laughs> she, she forced a nervous chuckle, the sort of fake <laughs> chuckle that slaps you across the face with its hollowness. <laughs> She regretted it instantly. Even a terse mm-hmm, mm-hmm would have been less scathing. She quickly followed up with just such a noise, hoping it might cover up the prior response. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he looked completely unfazed either way. His goofy, thoughtless smile remained unbroken. She eventually answered in a way that she hoped would deflect the question completely. Oh, uh, yeah. That uh, work, it just stopped. <laughs> Once again, his expression was unflinching. <laughs> if anything, he seemed to be grinning even more aggressively. She followed up with a small talk question on her own, which mortified her before she had even finished saying it. By God, it was twice as awkward as the one he just offered. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about abortion rights? Before she could retract it, however, he began to reply enthusiastically uncomfortably enthusiastically oh yeah just all of them just get fucking go bananas just just chop, ch chop and drop them all you know oh if only he'd said that that was her fantasy in that moment that he'd only just said that instead however he said something an order of magnitude more unpleasant oh yeah i don't know uh not really into it <laughs> She gritted her teeth through every uncomfortable nanosecond. Mercifully, though, it seemed like he was finished. Nicole managed exactly two and a half words in response before he launched with a profoundly unnecessary elaboration on what he'd just said, invoking barnyard animals in a way that she was sure had to be illegal in some places. When he finished, he just looked at her. Still grinning, eyes still piercing, like what he just said was normal and not grounds for not being locked in a dungeon for a century. Well, <clears throat> I mean, a couple things come to mind about that whole, you know, situation. Um, and there's a really good anecdote from someone I've gained a lot of wisdom from. It involves lobsters, and I think it'll make Illings <laughs> a lot more clear. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> she couldn't take it anymore. She broke. All she could manage were a series of syllables that could not be considered any human language, let alone English. Seriously, Jordan, are you... Fuck. You... <laughs> and that was it. Her tongue lolled out, head empty. No thoughts came. Is this what it was like to be him? It was pure joy, utterly sublime. <laughs> she could die in this moment and want for nothing. He waggled his eyebrows. He said nothing. Had she still the capacity to care, this new round of silence would have crushed her. Instead, it passed over her like verbal abuse passes over a goose. <laughs> Only the long-awaited appearance of her co-host finally broke this spell. All at once, a thousand emotions swelled through her, and they all fought for expression on her face at the same time. It was a chaos so biblical that some of the emotions seemed to splash over on the GM's face. <laughs> the co-host spoke calmly, as if none of this was of any import at all. Hey guys! How's it going? It's great to see ya! Nicole's fight-or-flight response triggered, and on this day there was no question of flight. Nicole didn't even have wings. Seeing the GM about to speak again, she leapt into action, cutting him off completely and letting out with whatever words came to mind. No contemplation, just action. Unfortunately, what came out was an unhinged and unfiltered rant about who really controls the media. Did you guys know? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no what? Did you guys know that it's all ducks? There, that's why geese get such a bad rap, and that's why um, we have such bad body standards as women. Um, it's all controlled by ducks. They're just trying to 
uh, convince us all to go vegan and stop eating duck fat and uh, pate and uh, so that they make us feel shitty for being uh, for gaining weight. That's foul. <laughs> I didn't Almost say you as foul as that joke. <laughs> so, yet somehow at the end of it all, something felt oddly right. Here they all were, alone with naught but each other and their thoughts, their hopes, their fears, their hang-ups, their barely repressed fetishes. Ooh. As the GM smiled blankly and the co-host spun an on-the-nose segue from her manifesto to the first segment of the evening, she settled into a strangely familiar feeling that everything was going to be okay. Okay.